pull up to the club in my 1964 caddy straight ready to stomp at a quarter to one just a looking for fun I said a twist for me baby hit a rip for me baby take another shot get lit for me baby Ooh, it's a quarter to two what you wanna do Country dancing to you I think a bit of cocaine Country dancing will do Make some noise for the one and only Louis Black Well, well, really, thank you and good night. That was very special. I, uh, I think that that music I play to come on to is a little, it's a little fucking over the top. I mean, really. And I chose it. I don't know what I was thinking. I mean, it's Metallica. Yeah. Damn right. They're not fucking around. I mean, you look, you hear that music, you look over there to see who's coming out, and you expect there to be like sword swallowers and jugglers and fire eaters and a whole ton of gymnasts led by the lovely and talented Simone Biles, and then a whole group of big cats shitting everywhere. And I, I have to say, I really would like to see that show. <laughs> but instead, you look over there and out wanders one aging Jew. <laughs> I'll be honest, even I was backstage when that music comes on, I'm looking around thinking, fuck, I can't wait to see who's going on. And then I realized it was me, and I was a little disappointed. <laughs> it's really amazing. The uh, people who are going to see comedy shows now, not you guys, but the, a, a ton of people are showing up at my shows from time to time who fucking seriously don't, did no research. They have no idea who I am. I had somebody in an audience recently when I was, uh, just as I was getting ready to, to go, the lights are coming down. She turns to someone next to her and says, gee, I hope he doesn't swear. <laughs> That's the least of your fucking problems. <laughs> if you have friends and they're going to see a comic, you tell them to watch the comic beforehand to see if they, if they enjoy the comic. Don't, just don't show up there. It's, it's absurd, you fucking... And then people think that, you know, I, 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 the, the, the jokes we're telling have an effect on anything. When the fuck did that happen? <laughs> Nothing that comes out of my mouth or the other idiots you're seeing this evening has an effect on anything. You could go to any town in the United States after one of us performs. And I can guarantee you people will be wandering around that city going, fuck, nothing's changed. <laughs> we had a beautiful day today, didn't we? If you're a gnat. <laughs> Son of a bitch. The only inflation that seems to be taking place here is the goddamn temperature. It's ridiculous. And I, I'll tell you this, I've, I haven't been back to to Vegas in about three years, and they have been, there's way too much shit out there, okay? They have jammed into every fucking possible space, everything imaginable. There's nothing that you walk into where you don't have to pay shit for. Nothing. 
And I, I had this, I've got a great idea. Uh, if I could get the investors, I, what I'd like to do is build a, a casino that's a giant penis, right? You know, and the head of the penis would be where the restaurant is and it would rotate, it would rotate. And that casino would be in the cock and balls, you know, just right there in the balls. You take the elevator up to the head when you're hungry. It's a brilliant idea. And I can guarantee with all of the shit that's out there, it would take them five years for somebody to go, oh, wow, that's a dick. <laughs> I've, got some, I've got some really good news. You probably know this already, but uh, I think you're going to enjoy it and it's going to make your day. Um, especially you guys. Researchers at the University of Rochester found that people who curse frequently tend to have higher IQs. I, I knew you knew. Higher IQs than their less profane counterparts. Cursing is associated with a love of language and a bigger vocabulary. So, so when you're at work, the next time you show up there and you see that person who's been bothering you forever, you go, hey, you, fuck you. <laughs> and they'll say, what was that about? And you say, I just wanted you to see how smart I am. It's amazing to me. My, uh, I, I, I do have some sad news. Uh, my mom, who some of you followed on uh, social media, my mom passed away in October, uh, and uh, she was 104. Yeah. And uh, really unbelievable uh, that she lived that long. And uh, it's, it, she, uh, on her, her birthday on, uh, when, well, actually in her 90s, she, uh, I said to her, what's it like uh, living this long? And she said, it's like fucking overtime. <laughs> and then, then on her 100th birthday, I said to her, uh, you know, she said, she, she said, uh, she blew out the candles and said, nobody should live this fucking long. And then we sang happy birthday. <laughs> My father lived to 101. Yeah, it's, it's pretty extraordinary. And uh, I've, I've wondered for a long time when they were getting older and older if they were actually just two tortoises that had escaped their shells. <laughs> My father was actually a, a lot sweeter than my mother. She, on his 100th birthday, which was, uh, uh, he, he was born on uh, the day before Valentine's Day, I said, God, what's it like, Dad? You know, what are, you, you've lived 100 years. Can you tell me something about what you've seen? And he said, the only thing that I'm thinking about is tomorrow's Valentine's Day. What the fuck am I supposed to buy her this year? <laughs> People ask me, you know, what was the secret to their longevity? How did they do it? Was it exercise? No. Was it diet? Just kind of, but they didn't eat quinoa. They didn't eat quinoa. <laughs> Ancient grain, but you know, fuck you. What, was, was it somebody looking through the bulrushes that Moses showed up in and went, ooh, look, an ancient grain. We'll call it quinoa. It tastes like sand. So, <coughs> so I, my parents, what the way in which
Yeah, I know, I forget I'm, stay calm. Stay calm, I remember to drink the water. I forget I'm in a desert, unless I'm outside. I walked two miles yesterday outside. Son of a bitch, that's wrong. God, so the secret to my parents' longevity is everything they ate, everything, all the food they had, um, contain preservatives. <laughs> and that's the way to a long life, folks, because, because as a result of that, they were preserved. <laughs> People would come up to me after my mom passed away and they were very nice and very sweet and would talk to me about her and, uh, and, and said, you know, you know you're gonna need time to grieve and I said, yes, I understood that and then they would start to talk about their parents who had passed away. And, uh, uh, and then they would go on and go on and on and on. And I'm going, well, we're supposed to be talking about my mother. Why, the, now I'm supposed to comfort you, you fuck? Your parents died five years ago. My mom died three weeks ago. Get a grip. It was unbelievable to me. And then I had to tell them a story to make them feel better and also so that they could understand what it's like when someone, your parent is 104. It's different, completely different. 104 years old, she was, they are it, it, unbelievably, it, 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 extraordinarily. Um, she, uh, she, I got a phone call right after, um, right after the, she had passed away from the funeral parlor. And they said to me, um, they said, uh, Lewis, uh, we have some bad news. And I said, worse than her being dead? <laughs> and they said, no, her, <laughs> but pretty close. I said, what, did she come back as a vampire? A zombie? They said, no, no, it was her, her, her urn where we were gonna put her ashes had been discontinued. Are you shitting me? Her final request is this urn? How the fuck, who cares? How do you run out of fucking urns? Oh, we're gonna need a new urn for people. My mother, God damn it. It's all she wanted. I mean, to put it quite simply, my mother outlived her urn. <laughs> That's old. And you shouldn't. This is how old, this is, you shouldn't, at, the, at, at my age, in my, at, in my 70s, be arguing with your mother about social security. Come on. Are you kidding me? And she's going, well, why are you taking it? You know, why aren't you taking it later? You should take it when you're younger. Uh, no, because I'm gonna get more money later. No, you should take it now. Why would I fucking take it now? No, you should take it now. Yeah, but look at how long you live. And then she said, well, I'm stronger than you are. <laughs> she, uh, she, she, was, she never fooled around. And the only thing that I, I realize now is, is that, uh, that God has his hands full. She is sitting right next to him, making his life a living hell. And for those of you out there who pray and you're wondering why your prayers haven't been answered, it's because she's up there yelling at him things like, what do you mean this place is perfect? Is this possibly the best comedy show you've ever been to?